Okay, so welcome back. This is part five in our series where we're talking about the wonderful free piece of software called LabVIEW that allows you to model and simulate control and data acquisition devices that are used everywhere in the real world. And we've talked about what is LabVIEW. We talked about how to install it. We talked about how to use it with an Arduino, which is a very nice, very inexpensive, like $20 data acquisition device, and you can use it directly in the LabVIEW software. In this video, we're going to talk about a commercial, more industrial version of a data acquisition device from a company called LabJack, and this is a very common data acquisition device used um, in many industries. And we're going to look at, as an example, the U12 which is one of the original LabJack devices, but the same process can be used, I think, for some of the other LabJack devices. So we're going to show you how to get that installed in LabVIEW so you can simulate directly a LabJack device. Now, unlike Arduino, um, which is all set to go in the community free version of LabVIEW, with a LabJack device, you have to do a couple more steps, but really it's pretty straightforward. And then once we have the LabJack software installed and talking to LabVIEW, what we're going to do is we're going to develop this very simple application that you see here. It's basically a VI or virtual instrument. And it's going to be very similar to what we did with an Arduino, but we're going to do it with the LabJack. And ultimately, it's going to have a couple of output controls on our LabVIEW front panel. And what we're going to do is, like we did with the Arduino, we're going to stream the data coming from the A0 on our LabJack, and we're going to plot it. And you, can, and you can see we've got a meter, and we've got a numeric output, and also a chart. So uh, we're going to show you, once we got it installed, we're going to show you how to do that. So to start out, we're going to go to this LabJack website. It's support.labjack.com. And if you search for LabVIEW and LabJack, then it should bring you to this site. And there are many, many different options for the different types of LabJack data acquisition devices. But what we're going to do is we are going to look for the U12 example code. And this is the example code and wrappers in the support.labjack.com. And under the U12 example code, we're going to scroll down and you can see they've got it for C Sharp, Borland, DAC Factory, Delphi, and here we've got LabVIEW examples for U12, for the U12 device, and Windows. And it will bring you to this page here. And it's got a lot of good information about how to get set up, how to get started, and we're going to assume you've got LabJack already installed for Windows, and all we're going to do is show you how to interface that with the LabVIEW software. Uh, they do have a short video tutorial, but basically what you have to do is you have to go down, scroll down to the bottom, and download this zip file, which is the latest LabVIEW 7.1 date of 2019 for LabVIEW 7.1 or newer. And you're just going to download, and it's a zip file. And what you're going to get is this zip file, and all you have to do is unzip the entire thing to get this folder. And inside the folder, there is a single folder called LabVIEW. And if you double click on it, you can see there is a lot of information here in the form of VI example projects for LabVIEW. So what you can do is you can use these as examples. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this LabJack folder. And that is all we need to move over to our LabVIEW installation to allow us to talk to the LabJack. And basically, it's an LJack UW.LLB and a DIR.MNU. So we're just going to copy that LabJack folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our installation of LabVIEW. And that's, in our case, C, Program Files x86, National Instruments, LabVIEW 2024 under the vi.lib folder and under the add-ons, just going to paste. You can see here I've just pasted that LabJack folder into that vi.lib slash add-ons folder. 
And now we have installed in LabVIEW the LabJack code that we can use to interface with our U12 LabJack device. And that's about it. And when we start up LabVIEW, we will automatically have access to the LabJack reading and writing and different methodology that we need to interact with our LabJack. So let's go start up LabVIEW and see how we can interact with our LabJack. So here we are in a blank VI virtual instrument in LabVIEW. And we'll start with the front panel. We wanted to have an analog meter and also a digital readout of the value coming in and a waveform chart. So we're going to right click and we can use Fuse Design System, whatever theme you want. Let's try the silver and we'll go to numeric and we can have a meter drag and drop that and we can resize it if we want and we can move it over here and then we also want a numeric indicator and what we can do is we can select this and size the font so it's a lot bigger so now we've got a bigger font for the readout and then we want a chart so we're going to go to graph waveform chart and put it there and then we can drag select and enlarge this and then the other thing we want is boolean we want a stop button enlarge it and then we'll also resize the font 36 and now we've got everything we want in our front panel and you can see it's added those controls to our block diagram now the important thing is we need to have an analog input from the lab jack so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to add-ons. Remember we pasted that folder, that LabJack folder, into the add-ons folder. And you can see now we've got LabJack down here, a folder. And there's a whole bunch of stuff here. We've got AI Stream, Bits to Volts. And we're going to choose this easyanalogin.vi. So we're going to click on that. And that's going to allow us to do a very simple input. Move these around, clean them up a bit. And what I can do is I can align them and we can rescale this so now we can see a little bit better. So this is basically all we need for the LabJack. Um, it automatically is going to go out and recognize it. Uh, it. With the Arduino we had to have an external connection where we specified the COM port. We don't need that with the LabJack so it's very nice. And all we have to do is we have to say what input we're going to use. If we zoom in on this you can see we've got ID number, channel, gain, error, demo, overvoltage. This is for an overvoltage alarm. Local ID, voltage output, bits, and error out. So what we can do is we can say, okay, we, here's the channel specification. So I can right click and create a constant. And you can see it automatically gives us a channel selector as a constant. So we can click on this and we can do analog input zero, analog input one, which is a single ended, not differential, like a differential probe on your scope. You can go down here and use differential, but these are single ended where one end is ground. And they say, okay, this is limited to plus or minus 10 volts. And we've got the zero, we've got the differential if we want to use differential between analog input zero and one. But we're going to default it to analog input zero, which is a single ended. And that's all you need in order to get the lab jack to read the single ended input analog zero. Now, as with the Arduino, we're going to need a while loop. So we will add a structure, a while loop. And it's got a stop button. We can connect that. And we also are going to need a timer. So we go down to timing and we can say wait milliseconds as we did before. And then here we can create a constant and we're going to set this for say 100 milliseconds or a tenth of a second. So really that's all we need. We're going to have three outputs of the data coming from the lab jack. We've got the numeric output, the digital readout the analog meter, and then the waveform chart. 
Now we can also send the data to a file, and we'll talk about that in another video, but basically just taking this data, send it to file, and it's very, very easy to do. But now all we have to do is we say, here is our voltage. You can see it says voltage. We can send that to the numeric, and then we can do the same for the meter, connect it, and we can do the same for the waveform chart. And at this point, we are all set to go. So I'm going to hit run on this, and we should see a voltage here, which is 1.57 volts. We don't have this large enough, but see it's 1.59, and it's charting it all around 1.59. And that's it. It's really, really easy to do with the lab jack. And again, it's really nice because it's got over voltage protection on the lab jack, and it's a more professional device. So now when we installed uh, the LabJack library, recall we downloaded the zip file and we unzipped it and got this file and inside it there is a LabView folder and in the LabView folder we had the LabJack folder that we copied over and that's got the library. But also if you notice it's got a lot of files here that are .vi which is virtual instrument which is a LabView file and you can open these directly. And these are all kinds of examples of LJ Logger, LJ Scope, and you can imagine what these do. We've got an E analog in, easy analog in and out, digital I.O. example. So what you can do is you can start up LabView and you can read in any of these VI files and see how they implement it. So let's take a quick look. We'll start up LabView and look at one of the examples and um, it will give you an insight into how you can do it. So we've got a um, simple example or an easy analog loop. So we're going to do a simple example and click on it. And here is the front panel of an example that they give you. And you can see we've got analog input 0, analog input 1, and it's measuring volts. How you want to configure the channels so it can be single-ended or differential. And also notice that we've got some analog input data and there's also this over voltage alarm. Keep in mind one of the nice things about these professional devices, unlike an Arduino, with the Arduino if you put over 5 volts you can damage the device. With this they've got internal protection and they've got for example an over voltage alarm but it will protect the input so you can put more than 10 or 20 volts depending on how you have it configured. And it will be fine. It will just give you an alarm. So really nice example. And it will show you, if we go into the window show block diagram, it will show you how they implement this and give you some ideas on how you can do it. These are really good resources on how you can configure your um, VI for your LabJack device. So in upcoming videos in this series, we're going to take a look at how you can implement control systems in LabVIEW. And we're also going to look at how you can generate very quickly an executable, an application based on this VI. And basically put it on a thumb drive and move it to other computers and run this application on other computers, even if you don't have LabVIEW installed. Really nice. And we're going to look at uh, things called sub-VIs and File Explorer and so on. So uh, if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.